So hello everybody, this is Andrew Gable here. Uh, I just finished this carving. This is a Brazilian soapstone carving. And um, it's my, my first piece actually that I completed in 2021. In this video, I'm going to, you know, I compiled a bunch of footage of the carving process. So I'm gonna bring you into the studio to show you guys how I created this piece and kind of my thinking behind it. So I titled this piece Chinook. Uh, I had a little carving that I did last year that I titled Chinook, and it was very similar to this piece uh, in the sense of if you look on the other side, it's got this warm coloration right here. Now, I went to art school in Calgary, um, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and during the winter time, we would have these weather systems that would come in. That we would call them a, a Chinook. So a Chinook would come in, which was a, a warm wind that would blow in often in the middle of winter where it would be like minus 15 and then the next day it would be plus 10 and you'd have the Chinook and all the snow would melt and it would be summer for like a day and then it would pass through and it would go back to winter. And so this warm coloration on the stone actually reminded me of that. And I also thought it was a perfect tie-in because a uh, Chinook is also the name of a species of salmon that these bears feed on and they're actually in this area. Yeah, let's have a look at color. It's a stunning color. And I actually, I, I tested out a new finishing technique for this one. So this one I polished um, very smooth and it's got more of a glassy finish to it. And it really accentuates the stone I find and draws, you know, draws the eye to the stone, which is, which is the key feature of these pieces. So I'm really happy with this new polishing system that I'll continue to apply and integrate with my old way of polishing. So yeah, this piece has like this beautiful green base. It's like a darker green and it's kind of got a lot of like streaks running through it. Um, here's one of like a lighter greenish color and you can see the act actual lighter greenish color kind of shows up on this side. So you've got kind of this cool um, double coloration happening and there's a lot of like copper streaks in it which actually happens when you have a crack in the stone and the water gets into it and actually changes the color of the stone in that area um, but it actually transforms the color too and brings these really beautiful copper notes to the piece um, so this is a really beautiful colored stone and it's got sort of black speckles in it as well throughout the stone. So this piece is about 16 inches long and about 11 inches high, probably five inches width. And I'm gonna guess it's probably about 50 pounds. I haven't weighed it, but I'm getting pretty good at um, guesstimating these when I pick them up. Um, but it's, it's a, quite a substantial weight. And that's what I like about working with stone actually. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because I've got to carry these stones around, um, but there, there's something that's very substantial about a heavy piece when you go to pick it up and you realize how heavy this thing is. But it's gonna be about 50 pounds, it's not too bad. You know, I can, I can lift it up quite easily. So this was the first piece that I've done in 2021 and I had taken some time away from carving and so this was kind of the piece that brought me back into the studio. It was kind of my entry piece back into the studio. So <laughs> I wanted to sort of take it easy um, kind of ease myself back into the process. When I started, you know, I wanted to keep the pose very simple and I actually really love the angle of the head. Um, I feel like this is one of my most successful pieces in terms of how bears naturally stand, sort of just like a comfortable resting stand. And see, that's the thing that I love about carving is you can not only change the position of them, but you can refine and specify the position and you learn the different angles and structure of the anatomy and, and what a bear can and can't do in terms of how it moves its body. Um, but I was really happy with the angle of the head and the neck here and kind of just how the bear naturally stands. I thought it has a, has a great kind of bearish quality. And actually I love both sides. Like I like the dark patterning with the copper in it. And then I like the lighter green, yellow, warmer side to it. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's 360 degrees because it's 360 times 360, isn't it? I don't know how that works, but 
there's so many angles you can look at the piece from. Um, so that's one thing that I love about carving. It was a very successful piece. It's got a great face. Uh, I love doing the details in the face and you'll see that in the video when you watch the video. I find it just all really came together really well and it was a great piece to kind of get myself back into the carving process. Um, Chinook, uh, beautiful grizzly bear carving in Brazilian soapstone. And if, yeah, if anyone's interested in this piece, definitely reach out to me or any pieces for that matter. Okay, so now I'm gonna take everybody through the actual carving process and talk a little bit about what was happening, you know, as I was carving it. The first day back carving, getting set up, I actually snapped this plug in and broke it. You can see right here, I just broke it. So I didn't have power for the first day. It was a little bit tricky to get set up. Um, there's the raw st stone getting it into place. And it's, it was actually bigger than I thought it would be. Here I'm just checking to see if I could see any cracks in the stone and just get an idea of how I'm gonna place this bear. I knew that towards the tapered side, I would probably be putting the head, but I just wanted to check to see if there was any cracks in the stone. And that's why I actually sand the piece first to see if where I'm placing the head or any of the key features, there's gonna be any cracks because you kind of want to avoid those. Um, so now I'm starting to sort of draw in the piece and get an idea. Initially, I thought the head was gonna be up and as you can see here, struggling with the power again. What's going on? Oh boy, let's try this. No, okay, so day's over. <laughs> Next day back, um, getting started drawing in the face and you'll notice I actually draw in the face a lot because I draw it in and carve it out um, but it's always fun doing those first cuts usually I do the line here where the ears are where the tip of the nose is and right in the center on the eyebrows and those three lines um, there's two there now but you'll see I'll do three lines kind of getting the right distance um, I use this blade because there's not a lot of friction and you don't want any friction when you're carving because you don't want to break your stone. So then I cut off that level. So I'm going to be sort of doing the bear with the head up. That was the plan. So you can see I'm, I'm establishing the angle right now, drawing that face back in and there's the eyebrows and carving away now a lot of the excess stone that I'm not going to be using. And now going ahead and so I do this too throughout the carving. I'll draw in and then I'll cut off what I've drawn and then redraw it and kind of draw and carve and draw and carve as I go throughout the process. I don't typically work for models. I just jump right in and kind of carve. Now I had a little fault in the stone. So I ended up cutting the piece actually quite flat and changing my design after that first day. And now I'm going to be doing the head down. I decided, and this is that, angle that I really that I talked about in the beginning of my video here that I really loved and so that angle was actually established right then and there and there I am drawing in the face again getting the angles measuring it out I use my hands a lot for measuring and gotta love those drawing skills learning how to draw from a reference for many years really helps me in my carving process Okay, now we're starting to get into it. It's starting to get real now, folks. I'm carving out the nose. This is always an exciting time because I feel like I can really start getting into the piece now. And sometimes I, I resist kind of moving forward in the piece and you just have to jump in and you, you have to start making those, those major cuts. But I always leave myself a little bit of room. Like I, those first initial cuts on the nose were actually thicker than I needed them to be because then I'll slowly work away with my file and work it down to the size I want. Um, so I'm just sort of establishing some of the relationships, the measurements of the face. And as I've mentioned before, you know, I, I spend just as much time on the face as I do on the rest of the piece. You can see I've lifted up the stone here and that helps me because what I find I naturally try and straighten out the piece. Like it's, I don't know what it is. It's like a natural thing with the body. Your internal measuring system just naturally tries to straighten it out. So what I do if I want to tilt on the head is I actually raise the stone, raise the front of the stone and carve it straight. And then when I put the stone back down, there's a tilt. So that's one of the techniques that I do. Um, 
establishing where the uh, the hump is going to be on the back and getting the angle of the back and there's a few key angles here that are important um, when you're carving to get sort of that uh, that feel of a, of a bear kind of in the in the gravity of it and the weight of it um, yeah, I got my references there. I actually got that little mechanism just like off of Amazon that holds my phone and that's been an awesome addition to my carving studio. After a few days, the sun started coming out. I'm happy about that. It's still a little cold in the studio. Gotta have my hot coffee with me. Um, here we go, cutting off a lot of that excess stone, getting into where the feet are gonna sit. And um, what am I doing here? Lifting this up. It's good to get a little bit of height so you're so it's easier to work with the stone. I find myself crawling around a lot on the ground <laughs> trying to get underneath the thing but um, you know it's a physical process carving stone. It's like a there's a there's a definitely a physical labor element to it. Um, yeah just working on now getting the feet in place and I kind of do that. I start with the head and I work back into the piece, work down into the legs. Got a little bit of snow one of the days, um, kind of winter showing itself a little bit, but you know, I've dressed warm enough and it honestly was a really mild winter and we've had a really mild winter um, until recently, so it wasn't too bad of working in the studio. Um, got one of my carving attachments going and just kind of refining around the face. And here we go with those hand files and my little Dremel and I really go to work with those two uh, tools to really get that face and get those details. And it's great because I can really slow down uh, during that time and, and I really like to do that. Just like slow down, focus on the details, don't rush yourself. And stone carving, it takes a long time and that's part of it. You sort of have to just be patient. Um, you can see I kind of mapped out where the feet are gonna be sitting. I kind of wanted the front paws turned in and the back ones turned out a little bit. Thought it would make it like a little interesting point. More rain, but you know what? It's nice out. My carving studio is out sort of in the country, so I love it. I love hearing the crows. You know, it makes me feel like I'm close to nature as I'm carving nature, right? Time to get in underneath the piece, flip it over and get those feet kind of starting to carve out underneath. It's important not to ever rush any part of this process. And often you lose your tools. So you gotta keep track of where your tools are. <laughs> Cause that dust, you know, the layers of dust just happen like quickly. A Little bit of snow and back in the studio for another day, get my phone set up, get my Google photos. I got about 200, 300 bear photos on there. Um, and I kind of use like a collection of specific ones for each uh, each piece I do. Love my coffee, got my hot coffee. Gets me through the day. All right, what are we doing? Now I'm checking like, I arrive at the studio and I'm checking, what am I gonna work on today, right? And I check all the angles and I just see what jumps out. Like where where should I start today? Sometimes I know, sometimes I have to sort of do this process where I'm testing, I'm looking. What needs to be the next step? And here, I think I've got it. You know what? I think I need to work on the feet. Getting the feet, taking out a little bit of stone from underneath the feet. So that's what I, that's what I started on in this day. And I probably will jump right back to the head because usually in the morning, I like to work on um, the details in the head. That's where I'm my freshest. But first I gotta do a little bench clean, get all that dust out of there. I have to do this throughout the whole carving process because I'm making a ton of dust. More rain. And this is another thing. One of my most useful tools in my carving studio is this kitchen sieve because I can put my tools in there because I'm right now I'm looking for a specific carving tool that I've sort of lost amongst all my other ones. So I got to clean out the dust and it just helps me see my tools. And there it is. My die grinder, I've had this die grinder for like five years. It's been a Makita die grinder. I think it was about $400, but it was so worth it. It's been an absolute workhorse for me. I use it on every single piece. 
and um, here I go now and this is where it gets really fun where I'm really just moving and forming the face and it really starts to come to life when I'm doing these details it's one of my favorite parts of the carving process but honestly I love all parts of it it, it seems to sort of come to life throughout every single process every single part of the process sometimes some of those first cuts suddenly a bear jumps out and you're like wow and i actually will sharpen my fine point uh dremel bits into a finer point and i don't even have the dremel on here i'm actually just using a fine needle point and i'm scratching in kind of where i'm putting the eyes because soapstone is so soft you can actually scratch away um, the stone this is the Squamish River that I drive over every single day going to work and eagles are always perched along this river. But it's just such a beautiful scene, a beautiful area where I live. So grateful to be living in this area. And there was actually a few grizzly bear sightings in Squamish this year, which is the first I've heard of it. Um, so I'm getting into the final days here. I think this is like I got a day or two left and you can see that everything's starting to come together. I'm starting to really refine that face. Face is usually the first thing that I fully finish. And you can see it's coming to life and not quite done that nose yet or those ears are a little big still, but slowly working on it. And there we go, slowly, that's the key word. It will come together. You just gotta be patient. And I mean, it does move quickly, but there's sort of a close up. got the face done. Now, getting, the, getting the, uh, the feet kind of lined up. And now I think this is my last day carving. Beautiful day. Last day into the studio. I'm, it's always exciting doing the, you know, showing up when you've done the face. It looks good. And now you just got to kind of bring it home. So it was a beautiful sunny day. Got my piece of marble there that I still haven't carved. Um, getting set up here very repetitive you know carving is repetitive you got to show up and you gotta you gotta do the work do a little quick uh quick shovel just to you know clean some of the dust out of the studio and out of the mind and kind of clean things up and now let's get into carving the details of the claws and the feet you know the feet are actually quite tricky there's they've got an interesting structure to them and so i really you know you really want to get the angle the angles and the details and really focus in on the bare feet and see how they really really work um there's a couple of dogs that live on the yard where where i'm renting my studio space and uh they like to come over and visit every once in a while and say hello they're big dogs and they sort of keep the bears away <laughs> sanding process now and you can actually see here as the stone gets sanded you can see the color it actually gets darker but that's the color like starting to come through so if i were to get that wet now you would see the color and um so i go through three or four different layers of sanding honestly soapstone is very easy to sand because it is soapstone it's softer so that that makes the process a little nicer you can actually shape the carving too and then i get in with my die grinder and i'm actually sanding underneath there but there it is ready to be ready to be oiled and finished. Um, add a little bit of texture into the, the neck there, um, which was a nice feature, I thought it worked. And then of course, you gotta sign it, 2021. Sign it before I get, uh, get it on this bench here to do the oiling. This is my tongue oil, I've been using this for a long time. And I find it just works, like it just works good, so I just keep using it. Um, but I also have tested now this other uh, technique to finish it where I've applied the tongue oil, but I've also uh, am applying some other uh, Compounds to it to really bring out the shine and protect it and give it a layer of protection because soapstone is a little bit soft, too So there it is looks quite beautiful um, It's got that nice warm yellow color on the side It's always a nice sense of accomplishment actually when I finish a piece I always feel like okay cool got one down that feels great and then, um, yeah, on to the next one. All right, thank you everybody for joining me uh, for this video. Time to clean the studio and get ready for another one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thanks for watching.